Hi everyone. Uh, can you guys, can you hear me well? I think so. Okay. Yep. Well, um, thank you for coming to this talk. My name is Zainab Al-Shell. Um, some of you might know me from the feature that was published by Gary, uh, The Secret Life of a Martino Spoke, uh, which featured some karate. So sometimes I look like this, but most of the time I actually just look like this. Um, I did my PhD in Sydney, Australia in 2018. Um, and now I'm doing my postdoc with Marco Lodger in the Lodger lab. So let's jump straight into it. Um, today I'll be presenting the paper that was published in Brain Behavior and Immunity earlier this year. And the title of the paper is In Vivo Imaging of Neural Inflammation in Veterans with Gulf War Illness. So let's start at the very beginning. Gulf War, the Gulf War was in 1991 in Iraq and the US sent about 700,000 soldiers uh, these soldiers were exposed to increased temperature, uh, sorry, extreme temperature. Uh, they were exposed to sleep deprivation, uh, physical exertion. They were given PB pills, which was used to protect against a nerve gas. Um, they were exposed to pesticides, which was widely used uh, to prevent insect-borne diseases. And some of them were exposed to the nerve gas itself. So after the war, about 30% of these veterans ended up developing Gulf War illness, or GWI for short, which involves a musculoskeletal, actually a very widespread musculoskeletal pain, fatigue, cognitive and affective decrements. So that includes slower motor function, poorer visual and verbal memory, and worse attention. And the ideology is largely undetermined, which makes it really difficult to diagnose and then to also treat. So what, what we know so far about Gulf War illness is that neural imaging has actually shown us a dysfunction of brain white matter. So the white matter is actually the white part of the brain, which uh, mostly is made up of the axon of the neuron. So right here. Um, and uh, we also have seen uh, a reduction in gray matter volume and an altered gray matter activity. So the gray matter is the gray part of the brain and that is mostly made up of the cell body of the neuron. We also know that there is a decrease in cerebral blood flow and a decrease in some metabolite levels. And metabolites are measured using magnetic resonance spectroscopy and they tell us a little information about the health of the neurons in the brain. So what about some animal models? Well, they have shown us that there is an activation of astrocytes and microglial activity uh, or there's an increase in astrocyte and microglial activity, which is actually an indication of neural inflammation. So here is an example of an increase in astrocyte activity in Gulf frailness compared to the controls. Um, and a very similar result can be seen here in a different study. Uh, and up here is an example of an increase in microglial activity in Gulf frailness compared to the controls. So there is clearly neural inflammation in animal models of Gulf war illness. But what is neural inflammation? Well, it's actually an inflammatory response within the central nervous system. And the majority of the time it's good. So it's positive when it's acute because it identifies a potentially harmful event and then limits its impact and repairs the damage. However, it becomes a problem when it becomes chronic because that suggests a maladaptive or pathogenic state of the brain. So we've seen it in animal models, but can we measure it in humans? We can use a translocator protein, uh, uh, it's called TSPO, which is a marker of neural inflammation and it's upregulated uh, because it's upregulated by microglia and astrocytes. And we can see this in a number of conditions such as uh, multiple, multiple sclerosis, HIV, encephalitis, ischemia, uh, Alzheimer's disease and, and some animal pain models. Um, you can see here, for, any, for example, in the spinal nerve ligation, which is a model of pain, there is a co-localization of TSPO and GFAP, uh, which is actually a marker of glial activity. So we can see on the very right, at the very bottom, um, that there is a co-localization of TSPO and GFAP, which suggests that we can use TSPO to measure um, activated glial cells. But how do we do that? Well, uh, we can use PBR28, uh, which is a, a, a radio ligand. Uh, it's carbon based and uh, we can use that in a PET scan. So in a PET scan, this ligand shines bright so we can image it. Now, because this ligand actually binds to TSPO, 
an increase in signal suggests an increase in TSPO, um, and an increase in TSPO suggests an increase in microglia and astrocyte activity, which is a marker of neural inflammation. So the image we would get after doing all the processing would look a little something like this. Um, so what this image is actually telling us is that there is an increase in inflammation in the thalamus of these patients. So this is what we did. We took 15 veterans with Gulf War illness and 33 healthy controls. Eight of those healthy controls were uh, healthy veterans. So they were exposed to very similar conditions as the veterans that ended up developing Gulf War illness and uh, 25 healthy civilians. We put them through an MRI scanner, an MRI PET scanner. So for those who are at the Martino Center, this is base six. Um, and we collected PET images, we processed them, and then we analyzed them. But we had a theory. We noticed that these Gulf War illness uh, subjects had symptoms that were very similar to fibromyalgia, in that they both had uh, widespread musculoskeletal pain, fatigue, and cognitive difficulties. So it's possible that they had very similar mechanisms. So we thought to start there. In a previous manuscript published uh, in 2019, um, our lab found an increase in neural inflammation in uh, fibromyalgia patients compared to healthy controls in the primary somatosensory and motor cortices, the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, the precuneus, and the anterior midcingulate cortex. So we decided to start with those areas. We extracted the PBR signal from those regions and compared them between Gulf War illness subjects and healthy controls. What we found is that indeed Gulf War illness subjects showed an increase in inflammation in all but primary somatosensory motor cortices compared to healthy controls. Um, but we wanted to look at whether we also see this increase in inflammation when we compared the Gulf War illness subjects to the healthy veterans that were exposed to the, to the very similar conditions. And what we found is that again there is an increase in inflammation in all but the anterior midcingulate cortex. So this was very exciting, but then we wanted to explore the whole brain and see what happens there. Um, so we looked at the entire brain and again, we see this inflammation and it's actually very widespread neuroinflammatory signal in the Gulf War uh, subjects, Gulf War illness subjects compared to the healthy controls. We see it encompassing M1, S1, S2, dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex amongst other regions. But again, we wanted to look at whether we are still seeing these results when we compare Gulf War illness subjects to the healthy veterans that were exposed to very similar conditions. And what we find is that indeed there is still an increase in inflammation, but it's just not as widespread as when compared to all the controls, but it's still in some of the major regions. So what does this all actually mean? Um, so this study was actually the very first to document neural inflammation using TSPO as a marker uh, in Gulf War illness. Um, and potentially we can look at whether glial modulation is a viable therapy for Gulf War illness. But before we get too excited about the results, uh, we do need to validate the study. Um, we need to increase the sample size. Um, and we need to collect detailed information about other brain insults, for example, early life stresses to understand why some veterans go on to then develop goal for illness and, uh, and others do not, even though they were exposed to very similar conditions. So I would like to thank my lab, specifically my supervisor, Marco, and my co-author, Dan, for their support um, and the rest of the Martino Center for their continuous support. Um, any questions?